did you check to see if other of his employees were performing said work in his absence? There are other employees, as he, suge as he stated, there are other employees that are spotting the number of truckloads of fill entering the site. Do those hours reach the contract of five hours a week, 80 hours per week? I, I don't believe so. You're either, they either do or they don't. <laughs> <laughs> it, again, it depends on the number of hours. It's as clearly stated. It depends on the number of employees he has on the site. 40 the hours per employees. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll ask that my questions sure. not, Go if ahead. we're going to open it to one person to debate every question, then I have to. Go ahead. So do the hours performed match the contract in front of us? No, they don't. Councilwoman Keyes referenced an insurance policy from 2011. Can you please tell me what the contract said about what type of insurance has to be kept up to date? Insurance requirements, workman's compensation up to $1 million in liability, general liability insurance up to $1 million per occurrence, automobile liability, a minimum split limit of between 100000 to 300000 bodily and injury per property damage, professional liability, $1 million minimum limit. An umbrella policy in the minimum at a minimum limit of two million dollars. Have all of those insurance requirements been met annually since two thousand and eleven? No, they are, they have not all been met. When was the last time that they were met? The last insurance certificate we got by our risk management department it was four nineteen two thousand and eleven. So we've not had any updates on insurance since the year 2011? Not to my knowledge, sir. Finally, I think my last question. The councilwoman also mentioned reports that were supposed to have been submitted. She said 40 reports. That sounds like it must have been sort of some sort of quarterly report. Weekly, monthly, and quarterlies. I'm sorry? Weekly reports, monthly reports, as outlined in the RFP. And were those weekly, monthly, and quarterly reports supposed to have been submitted in writing, orally? Does it speak to how it would be presented? The second amendment that Mr. Celestine suggested, it says to be reported to the city manager. And does your office have record of those reports? No, we don't. When was the last report that your office received from Mr. Celestine? Um, I have not received any since I started. When did you start as city manager? April of last year. So in the last year, you've not received any of the contractual reports? No, sir. Does your office have any record of any other city manager receiving reports from Mr. Celestin prior to that? I have not seen any in, on record. Okay. Thank you, Mr. M manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, I just want to piggyback on the line of questioning from uh, Councilman. Regarding the insurance and reports, is there any clause in the contract that mention proper notice Madam Attorney, you want to if we find that the contractor is deficient in right. any of the duties is there any clause that speaks to the issue of of, of sending in proper notice and a proper time to cure that that de that deficiency now there's no notice and curing provision in the when, when was the last time Mr. Celestine was, no, was notified that he, <coughs> that he, he was not the, yeah, that he was not in compliance with this contract because of deficiency of reports? Oh, um, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. It, it's here. Section Article 7, okay. default. If property manager fails to comply with any term or condition of this agreement or fails to perform a any of its obligations here under, the property manager shall be in default. The city shall have the right to terminate this agreement in the event 
property manager fails to cure a default within 15 business days after receiving notice of default. Property manager understands and agrees the termination of this agreement under the section. Okay. So not okay. That's after noticing proper, I, I mean, after receiving proper notice. Did we that ever send correct. any written notice to Mr. Celestine about these deficiencies? Not to my knowledge, sir. Okay. I rest my case. The councilwoman. The hmm? uh, city attorney can direct us. No, no, no. If you don't have any, you have Mr. Councilman. Hmm. Uh, no. I think for a big project like uh, the Biscan Landing project, we do need a third party to oversee the project. And uh, I don't think I'm going to rely on staff just to tell me if Biscan Landing is in compliance with uh, all the code, all the DERM requirement. And on top of that, we have a $33 million grant from the county Correct. for the remediation. And uh, about the dirt that be has been discovered and on the field is because of that third party. And uh, I'm in favor of a third party to oversee the project. And I don't trust staff to do so. Staff said the feel was okay, but it was not okay. You all, you all come up here and said, remove it, and we vote for the developer to remove it, not because of staff, because of the third party. I'm not talking about Mr. Joe Celestine. I'm talking about a third party to oversee the project to make sure the developer is in compliance with the city code, the county code, and the grant that we are receiving from them. Okay. And uh, Mr. Celestine just accused Councilwoman Keys of saying that, and uh, you get the contract because of uh, political favor, maybe because you are Haitian American. I will take the blame. I did not vote for Mr. Celestine because he's Asian American, because you were there before me. And when I read the resolution, and uh, actually Mr. Blend is the one that make the motion, that's when I don't know if Mr. Blend vote for you because you are Haitian American. And uh, The motion that I would like to make, the motion is to terminate. What is the motion? The motion is to terminate. The motion was made by Councilwoman Case and seconded by Councilman oh, Galvin to, to approve this item. Oh, oh, to terminate it. Okay. Yeah. Me, I'm in favor of a third party uh, to oversee the contract, but I'm in favor of a new RFP. May I make a suggestion, Mr. Mayor? That's, that's what I will, I, I, I will be okay with. Um, and uh, whoever win, win again, but with a new scoop of work. With a new and with money attached to the RFP. Correct. To know how much it's going to cost, <laughs> what needs to be done, and everybody, all the council members can see what we want to accomplish on the side. Okay. And uh, happy to amend no, that council, will be the, the to motion speak. is to do an, a new RFP. Councilman wanted to yeah. speak first. No, I was gonna. I was gonna applaud and uh, echo what the councilman had just added. That things have changed dramatically since 2011. Correct. We do have a developer on site who's performing a good bit of this work. Three hundred thousand dollars annually is more than you make, and more than you make, and more than he may, and he may. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. two fifty is still a lot of money in some people's books. So I, I think we could definitely. Uh, when the count, as the councilman said, when put out a new RF RFP, we don't need to budget for that much money um, and, and put in a new scope of work. I just want to echo what I, I would amend my motion to terminate the contract and redefine the scope of what is needed out at the 
uh, project site at Biscayne Landing and put out a new RFP. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Can we, we repeat that again? Let me, let me ask you a question. Okay. Councilwoman? I would amend the motion to continue to, it would still read to terminate the contract, but to um, direct staff to put out an RFP, but to redefine the scope of what is needed for a project manager at this time. Mr. Mayor, point of order, please. It's important. This contract, Joe, 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 you know, we, no, Mr. Celestine, you know we, we no, can't do Mr. that. Mr. Mayor, this is important. You know we can't do that. Mr. Mayor, there's a point of order, Mr. Mayor. This is important. Mr. Mayor, this call for 30 days notice to terminate. Yeah, that's what I'm We're going to say that. We, 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 we're we're going to get to that. So calm down. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alim, uh, Man. That's the point, the amendment. Uh, there, is, there is an amendment. It's a 30 days notice. 30 days notice. And an to RFP terminate as of tomorrow. And uh, a new scope of work and an RFP to go okay. out. Yeah. So, so, that's, um, so that's the new, mo that's, that's your new motion. That's correct. Okay, we, we need a second. Mr. Uh, may I? Second, second the motion. For, for discussion? I, I have a question. No, you second. Okay, now, now you can discuss okay. it. Question for the city attorney and the city manager. Within those 30 days, would we be able to put an RFP out and bring it back on in 30 days? I think we can do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We need that. We don't want this side this side to to be no. out of a okay. project manager. Sure. Mr. Clerk, okay. go over so the final. If I so this uh, may, may I? May I? Um, um, as the councilman mentioned, we don't want the side <coughs> because I, I'm just trying not to say everything that people has been said about us, the, our relationship with the developer, because I know there was a time that you were the um, the the public works director and That's Mr. Correct. Celestin has been coming back and forth. Um, the developer, I think it was the, the other company, not the Olita Partners, did not take a permit. So Mr. Celestin has to fight with them and this almost cost the city about $400,000. So because of all these little details that the city is it's really have a too good relationship with the developer, I really not in favor of not having someone there. So make sure that within the 30 days that we have. Other than that, I would like to have Mr. Celestin stay there until we have the RFP. Yeah. Here's why we here's don't why want to have that in Here's why I can't agree with that, though. We have m multiple violations of the existing contract. We have insurance that hasn't been submitted since 2011. Until that insurance is submitted, we can't let send anybody them, go Send them proper written notices. S send right. them proper written notices. <laughs> in the meantime, didn't do their work. Yeah, send them proper written notices. In the meantime, we have a motion that has been seconded. <laughs> we need to please call it and vote Mayor. on it so we can move on. Can That's correct. The, the motion, motion was made by yeah. Councilwoman Case, Vice Mayor Case, and seconded by Councilman Gavin. The motion was to approve this item to terminate the agreement mm -hmm. with the amendment to, to issue a new RFP and to redefine the scope of work. In addition to that, we are to issue a 30-day notice to Mr. Celestine. That's the motion. Um, Councilman Gavin, how do you vote? Yes. Councilwoman Steril, how do you vote? Yes. Councilwoman Keyes, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Bienname, how do you vote? Yes. Mayor Joseph, how do you vote? Yes. Item passes 5-0. Tab F, mm -hmm. proposed resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of North Miami, Florida, amending chapter 21, article two, division seven, section 21-76 of the code of ordinances entitled schedule of civil penalties and fines in the attached form to update penalties and fines for civil violation tickets, providing for an effective date and for all other purposes. Where are we at? That was tab F as in Frank. The uh, public hearing is now open. M Mr. Mayor, before we open the public hearing, could we have a, a short summary from staff to sort of get us oh, focused yes, on what staff. this is about? Please. Thank you. <laughs> this is a resolution to update certain code enforcement fees. If you recall, we had changed certain violations in Chapter 5 of the code, which related to building and zoning. Many of the 
code violation numbers were changed, so we had to accordingly change the numbers of the violations as well. So although there are a lot of strike throughs and additions, there are only four new violations in this particular resolution. That is section 5-14, which is failure to pass minimum housing uh, inspections, which is $500. Sections 5-23 and 24, failure to maintain landscape, which is $250. Section 5-32, failure to display permit, which is $100, and section 9-10D, uh, um, it was already in the code, but the fine is increased from $100 to $250, and that's the failure to provide waste collection services uh, with a minimum uh, frequency of two, thi two times a week. And we are deleting the uh, fine associated with the... 427. 427, which is it's unlawful to keep, harbor, maintain, or own a pit bull because that ordinance was struck last year. Or subsequently changed, yes. So there are four, there's, there are four new fines. It's just a lot of strike throughs because the code <laughs> numbers were changed. Sorry, the pit bull, we yeah, had. What's we the number? That's 4-27. Public hearing? Anyone who wishes to be heard shall do it now. Or forever hold your peace. Public hearing is now closed. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion from the dais? Um, the um, one of the code that says the failure to um, the landscape. Yes. Are we talking about commercial or residential as well? Both. So are we saying that if we if somebody did not cut the grass and we find them at two hundred and fifty dollars? That is correct. Do we cut it for them and then charge them? Yeah, but cut for it for the and abandoned it properties we do. Yeah. That's that's the how do you guys come up with that much money? Again, the uh, you know what you guys don't don't do that. I'm up here when you talk. I have no intention to disrespect. You. So do not disrespect me up here, please. Go ahead. What is it? How do you come up with the, the amount? Is it from other cities or what? There's is well, there's all other comparisons. We have an outside contractor that the city pays to go out and and do the service, and based on that, together with a 10% surcharge, administrative charge. This is what, this is how we came up with the fees. So how much that we used to charge them? Apparently this is new? Well, this oh. is new. This is new, yes. So we never, when we cite them, we never charge them because I know. No, when we put a lien on the properties, this is how it is done. If there's an abandoned property and the grass is not cut, we send out a contractor. Public Works actually has the records of sending out a contractor and then we tag a 10% administrative fee on that. That's how it's normally charged. Yeah, but how much is that? It because all depends. This, it this all depends on the property from size. From what I understand, this is still gonna be a lien because you're not going to arrest them if they don't pay the two hundred fifty dollars. No. So it's still gonna be a lien. But it all depends on the size of the property. If we send the contractor out there, it all depends on the yard, the yard space that he has to cut, and it, it's all dependent <coughs> on the size of so the property. So from what to what? To f ten percent from what inches, the, the feet, or, or no, uh, what? the code, the height of the, the grass. From when you say from what, what to no, what? No, no, no. Uh, Aline um, mentioned that uh, $250 uh, is depend of the height of the grass or the size of the, the yard. The, the size of the property. So yeah. how do you get from, what is big or how much extra from 250 <coughs> to 5000 or are we talking about, the, are we charging them per um, foot or for, what is it we're charging? Square feet. Okay, it's n originally basically a square footage area. I will tell you, based from the contractor who cuts our pump station area, the size of the pump station could run you anywhere from 300 per month, which is twice per month, or it can go all the way up to almost seven to eight, seven or eight hundred dollars per month. And it all depends on the size or the square footage of the grass that but he's how cutting. how much per square footage? Is there's no fixed cost. So I'm charging. He charges per site that he goes to. 
There's so no I'm fixed putting on cost. a black pay, a, a black slip, giving to staff. Mm -hmm. um, no. Go ahead. If you, if today you decide, okay, I, I, although that if I voted, mm -hmm. which I'm not, um, if I vote two hundred and fifty dollars per uh, yard, if you cut it, but staff decided, okay, this one is too big. Let me charge them five hundred instead, or let me charge them like no. what? No. So I, I'm not getting it. N no, th no, this is failure to maintain landscape, Landscaping. and it's two fifty. There's. I then think Aleem is talking well about. Okay, okay, yeah, so I think Aleem is talking right. about it's it's charges, yeah. charges for cutting grass and, and for leaves. maintaining properties that may depend on the type of property that the the city will assess Correct. for the work that it's doing. That's that's different. It's different. Fair enough. Any other discussions? Mr. Clerk. Motion was made by Councilwoman Keys. Motion was seconded by. Councilman Galvin, Councilman Bienname. No. Councilwoman Steril. No. Councilwoman Keys. Yes. Councilman Galvin. Yes. Mayor Joseph. Yes. Item passes 3 2. Tab G. Proposed ordinance of the Mayor and City Council of the City of North Miami, Florida, amending sections 10 36. 38, 40, and 58 of the City of North Miami Charter and amending Chapter 6 of the City of North Miami Code of Ordinances entitled Elections, specifically at Sections 6-21, 6-76, 6-78, entitled Qualification of Candidates, Dates of Elections, and Election of City Council Members, respectively to change the date of the general election from May 2015 to August 2016 and to change the date of all subsequent elections. Changing the date of the runoff election, adjusting the date for qualification of candidates, providing for the extension of existing terms of agreement, adopting such charter and code amendments pursuant to sections 100.36052, 100.36053, 100.36054, and 166.0214, the Florida Statutes 2014, providing for conflicts, severability, codification, and an effective date. That is tab G. Tab G, we are now yes. up to public hearing. No. Summary, from the, Summary from the staff. No, that thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this is second reading. This is the second reading. So just do us this a favor is and summarize <laughs> what we Sure. Did. This is the second reading for an ordinance that would change the election date from May 2015 to August 2016. So that's, that's it? That's yeah. it. Okay, public hearing is now open. Mr. Mayor, can, can I make a... No, let's go through public hearing and then we'll do discussion from the dais. Ms. Montgomery? Is this on? Is it on? Yes. Yeah. Annie Montgomery, 2082 Laurel Lane. Good evening, Mayor, and Council, and staff. First, I want to stress I am very opposed to this ordinance. Second, I want to thank Vice Mayor Keyes for putting this on the agenda for discussion. And third, I want to thank Mayor Joseph for voting yes on the first reading, so that voters could attend this meeting and make their voices heard. Mayor Joseph, you have a great opportunity here by voting this ordinance down. You would be known as the mayor that united the city, and my hope is we'll have a unanimous vote opposing the ordinance from the council. Should that happen, this building, this whole city will rock. <laughs> we can change the name of our city to the United City of North Miami. Thank you for your service. You. Public hearing is still open. Good evening, Carol Prager, Arch Creek. Arch Creek East. <clears throat> the only title in our democracy superior to that of the President of the United States is the title of citizen. 
That quote is attributed to Justice Louis Brandeis, U.S. Supreme Court. There's a saying, gentlemen, just because you can doesn't mean you should. This means there are many things that you should not do, even if you are able to do them. To say that you don't make mistakes is to deny your humanity. There are many here tonight who believe you made a grave mistake when you sought to move the city election by ordinance rather than by a referendum of the electors. Your actions galvanized activists throughout the city and united us in a common cause. Voting is a civil sacrament, the highest responsibility we have as Americans. It is how we determine our destiny. Civic engagement, which you will bear witness to tonight, underscores the most basic principle of democratic governance, that sovereignty belongs by right to the people. It is the people who define the public good, who determine the policies by which they seek the good, and who will reform or replace that which does not serve that good. We hope you fully understand and appreciate our effort and bear in mind that it is the people who afford you the privilege to sit on that dais. The people are speaking. Vote no on this ordinance. Thank you. Uh, public hearing is still open for whoever wishes to be heard. Mayor, Council, Susan Blumen, 1865 Northeast 117th Road in San Susi. At the turn of the century, I'm talking the one that was more than 100 years ago, um, my grandparents fled Ukraine and Russia. My husband's parents fled Russia. They fled Russia because a very small, small group of people was making decisions for them, and they wanted to come to the great United States. And so they got onto ships, and literally at like 15 and 16 years old, they came over because they wanted to have a voice. Please don't take away our voice. My grandparents came, I'm sorry. My grandparents came here in order to make sure that I, that you, my grandchildren and my future grandchildren, great-grandchildren would have a voice, that it would be our voice. We could speak, and not a tiny group of people would make decisions for us, that perhaps we could influence what you said, but that you would listen to us. Please listen to us. Please listen to where my grandparents came from and, and where you came from. Thank you. No clapping, please. <laughs> I'll give you cookies so you know. <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, Leslie Eustace, 1200 Northeast 128th Street. Um, I highlighted one word this evening, and that was circus. Um, I believe that another election will bring more of that type of activity. I believe you guys need to get to work, really get to work. I believe that um, another election will bring division. I believe everybody is just waiting for that election, glorify or whatever the case is. But I believe that you guys need to do work. There is, um, I can speak for the people where I stay at, if, um, especially Carol Keys, um, you're in my district. Um, there's people there that really need help and um, work is very much needed. Um, election, why? Just to, um, you know, divide just to, um, what's the reason, really? I believe that, yeah, you have a voice. You have a voice, you have a voice to, you know, I understand election time remaining one minute. I believe that you guys need work. I believe election would just cause vacation for you guys just to sit back and just relax. Um, you sit down, yeah, but um, I really believe that you guys need work, 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 work. Thank you. Thank you. Great, sir. Robert Waxman, uh, Keystone Point. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, I, I swore when I came here tonight I wasn't going to speak. Uh, 
I'm, 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 I'm breaking that promise to myself. Uh, I am sympathetic to some of the arguments that I've heard about synchronizing the elections. There'll be cost savings, there'll be efficiencies, and that can be attractive <coughs> on, on certain levels. But, and however, where I have a problem is each one of you on this dais was elected for a specified term. And when we voters voted for each one of you, it was with the idea in mind that you would be serving a certain set term. For you all, individually or collectively, to decide to extend that term is unconscionable. It's undemocratic. What I would rather suggest is that you all, in your infinite wisdom, find a way to achieve the economies of scale from a synchronized election that would not benefit any one of you sitting here currently. Now, if it benefits you subsequently, that's a different story altogether. And I might add, that is consistent with the the ideas behind the 27th Amendment to our Constitution, which I think you all should take a look at for a second, where Congress cannot vote for salary increases to benefit themselves. They can only do that for a subsequent, for a subsequent Congress. Uh, obviously, you're not talking about salaries here. We're talking about extending terms, but I think you get, the, you get what I'm talking about. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. City Clerk and staff. My name is Colleen Paul, better known as Teacher Colleen, 12215 Northwest Miami Court. I promised that I wasn't going to talk because at the last council meeting I talked, but I'm going to talk quickly to, let, to remind this council, those whose term expired, I already printed my t-shirt. I already printed my door hangers. The, the constituent who gave me donation to do that knows that I have election on 2015 on May 12. So I'm asking this council, <coughs> reconsider what you have to do because what you are doing was not budgeted in a budget to pay yourself an extra 15 months. Public hearing is still open, going once. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, member of the council, ladies and gentlemen, Jacques Despinos, 95 Northeast 131 Street. Registered voter in North Miami, a resident in North Miami. Previous council member. Here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you have to be registered for you to be a uh, council member. I hope that's the case, but sometimes not. <laughs> Listen, I was here a while ago while your guys celebrating March and the King Day or Black History Month. This is the same as far as we're concerned. That was very, very <coughs> nice. When you said about Black History Month, you're talking about <coughs> Black History Month, you know, uh, Martin Luther King, we're talking about uh, civil right, voting right, all kind. That's very, very nice. You have a lot of people from North Miami who are watching Channel 77, say, bravo, we are doing the right thing. And we come a couple, couple minutes later, we're going to remove the right to vote, the one Martin taking fire so hard and die for it. I think that is wrong. We also, in North Miami, we're voting for a mayor and for council. The mayor is the leader. It can only be one mayor at a time. And we want tonight respecting the mayor to prove he's the mayor. He's taking full responsibility of the citizen in North Miami. If we can, everybody here in this room, how many of you want election in May, the way it's supposed to be? Raise your hand. You see a lot of hand raised. 
you represent us. You voting for us. Okay? Give it up. Give this we up. hear the boom boom. <laughs> don't go too much. So what I'm trying to say is, it is a sign you got to listen to the voters. If you represent us. And that's basically what he is. Dr. Joseph, sometime you have to do the right thing. It might be not popular, but the right thing is the right thing. That's leadership. And I hope tonight you will be stand up. The oath you take with all respect, you will protect and defend the interests of North Miami and these people. We expect nothing less from you tonight is to kill the monkey. <laughs> Out. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, ma'am. My name is Mayor and Council, City Manager and Staff. My name is Howard Tonk, and I live at 12600 Griffin Boulevard. Um, I'm from Australia, and I emigrated to the United States in 1988. And as a democracy, I see my country and America differently. And I have to say that, that the United States is a much better example of democracy and a shining light of democracy in the world. And I think even my country can learn something from this country. And I so appreciate the freedoms and the sacrifices made by this country and especially by the military of this country and so much is fought for by the the service members of this country and to turn around and say that an, an election is is uh, awkward or inconvenient for a city city that has been through an awkward time um, this is this is what happens when a city goes through an awkward time we have to go on and have another election and democracy a democracy can be messy and democracy can e be expensive but I know that democracy is worth it and I come to this country to live by the rules of this country and I believe that in this country we do things the American way and we will do just fine thank you good evening mr. mayor council members uh, my name is Pastor Enoch Marianne, 12620 Northeast 4th Avenue, North Miami. I'm here tonight to speak with you as your pastor, as your spiritual leader, to give you some good advice. <coughs> and I've been living in this city over <coughs> 25 years. And as a pastor, I see what's going on in this, in this city. Some people poor, some people not working. Some people, they live in a shady house, shady home. To me, I'm here tonight to tell you it's not fair for election. Ask yourself why. We've been to election a couple months back and forth. How much it cost the city for elections? $180,000. $180,000. This is, remember that this is a taxpayer money. <coughs> Bible teach us how to to live with our money, to save our money. So therefore, we cannot we got to respect for the, the citizen of the North Miami. We cannot spend the money like this hundred eighty thousand dollars like this. Let's do it with the county, Miami Dade. If we if we do it with the county. We will only spend twenty-five thousand dollars. We'll save the city one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So now, you guys asking for elections? Two months. Two months. No time to prepare. <laughs> There's no time. So therefore, council members, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Manager, please. Each time we come to a good project in the city, there is elections. So therefore, let's move in the city with project, job, and education. Thank you very much. Hi. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Laura Hill. I live at 13075 Griffin Boulevard. Um, this is a city with a lot of problems. These are people who have lives here, who are raising their children here, who have jobs, who have no job. And we expect and elect you to be effective leaders. And the only way that you are gonna be <coughs> effective leaders is if you maintain your, your moral authority. If you vote to move our elections, you will see a widespread disapproval of your job, we will think 
that you actually, maybe you didn't earn it. Do you have the right to lead us if we have moral objections to the things that you're voting on? So I'm asking you, is, it, is, is that the price you want to pay for this? Is this the battle you want to fight, moving it and saving $25,000, saving $50,000, to lose your moral authority to lead our city, to lead the people who live in this city who have a lot of problems? We're looking to you to help us solve our problems. Maintain that moral authority, and you can be our partner, so, uh, our partner in improving North Miami. But you lose that moral authority, and you'll probably lose every election that you try to run, even if it is in November or May. Please, just keep the integrity, keep the transparency, and let's move forward with this city. Hi, Karen Mills Francis. You know, I'm a lawyer, um, and I'm a judge, but I'm always a lawyer. I have to pay bar dues every year. And so I always look at things from the legal perspective. <coughs> and, you know, everybody is saying, well, it's just not right that you do this. But in 1995, the Florida legislature gave all municipalities in the state of Florida the right for the municipal officers to change the date of the election. So you have had 20 years to bring this thing to a vote. So now I'm thinking like a judge. And the first thing they teach you in judges' school is to avoid the appearance of impropriety. And yes, you can do this. But we have, at this time that you want to do this, one of your members who has two people who filed against her. And we have a mayor who ran in a special election. This is not the time to change the election. I personally do believe that we could save money, but you can't use the saving money argument when we're paying somebody $25,000 a month. You can't use the saving money thing. I personally believe it's better. We have more uh, impact if we had the elections in November. But that's something that you can make a decision about after this May election, when everybody now is in a normal term and nobody benefits from it, just like Congress does. Don't do it now. Avoid the appearance of impropriety. Thank you. Who's first? You or who? Who, who, who's first? Salvador Rodriguez, 137 e Northeast, 4th Avenue. I wasn't going to speak today because we all spoke last time, and I think. I'm not going to repeat anything that you haven't heard. The young man that got up here earlier, I think no, you can set no greater example for him than to vote against this. Because he says it's time to work. It's not time for elections. Exactly. How is someone so disillusioned with the process that he's willing to give up an election just on the promise of work and betterment? You can give no better example for him than to show him this is what we'll do between now and our election, and that's where you either hire us again or fire us. That's what democracy is. The, the, the reverend that got up here and said, saving money, my vote is worth the $180. Right. <laughs> Next, good evening, Mr. Mayor. My name is Carly Jean, 665 North East, 133rd Street, apartment 16. So. I don't think so it's possible for election right now. There's a lot of problem on the city right now. There's a lot of people been on the list more than six, seven, eight months to repair the roof, to repair them houses. We need to fix that. I don't think so we need the election right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next. Mr. Mayor, member of the council and staff. Uh, my name is Jean Marcellus and Jean R. Marcellus a <laughs> former councilman of the city of North Miami. Two years ago, I sat on that seat, the last seat where Councilman Philip Bianemi sat no, right uh, now. I've been my chair. <laughs> 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 and uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, when, when this issue came up, 
the sitting mayor at that time, Mayor Andre Pierre, had the same idea to change the date of the election. <laughs> and uh, I stood up. I fought against him. I say the system is not working. We don't need to fix it. And we have a well-established system. <coughs> Why we have to change it for our own little interests? Uh, Councilman Bienemy, two years ago, I fought the sitting mayor <coughs> on many different Haitian radio. I make him back up from that idea. Today, you sit on the seat that I was sitting two oh, years ago. I'm with my chair. Please, <laughs> please, Mr. Bienemy, cast a vote for the people of the city of North Miami. Not for the interest of, not for your own interest, or any or any other people' interest. It's wrong. Make it. Make democracy. Really, that's what we talking about all the time. That's what we want. <coughs> make to make it tonight. Democracy is the thing that we're looking for tonight. Make it happen. Thank you. Next. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilman, women. Um, my name is Jose Areses. I've lived at 410 Northeast, 132nd Terrace, <coughs> excuse me, for 38 years in North Miami. I love North Miami. I love it very much. But I entirely agree with the judge uh, and attorney. Uh, this is not the right. Uh, I come from Cuba. I believe in this country, this beautiful country. God bless this country for 55 years. Why do I live here? because this is a land of the free and the home of the brave, where we the people decide who we elect <coughs> and what term is a person is going to be uh, elected for. Now, if they want to make a change, like the judge said, okay, make it at another time, okay? In May, you know, just put it in the agenda, okay, that we're going to, uh, w would you, pe will the people like to change the date of the election, mm -hmm. you know, uh, coming next election, but not to benefit the people who are in power at this time, because as I said, I came from Cuba, and I don't want you know any, I don't know any inkling of uh, impropriety or in this thing. So please do the right thing and don't change the date. Thank you. Esther Blinn, 1990 Northeast 118th Road. This is not a new idea. <coughs> changing the date of the election. It was determined, you always had that power, all of you that have been there before and all of you that sit there now, and it was left to the voters in 2008 to make that determination. So you have the opportunity, if you wish, to put it on the ballot for the May 2015 election while those of you that are up for re-election run as well for their seat. You had a contract with us, and even though a prior council could have done it by fiat, they chose to bring it to the voters. So I think you should do the same. Next. My name is uh, Mark Cherry, 12675 Northeast First Avenue. Um, I think we are tired of voting voting are coming here and there With less than a year we're having like three voting so I think having an election around right now is not a good idea thank you <laughs> Mr. Good evening everyone William Privatel 11950 North Bayshore Drive um, February is an interesting month. Uh, a lot of things go on in February. <laughs> I see by our nearly full house, our packed house, that everybody survived Groundhog Day. <laughs> and with, with all the red colors in the audience, that we're here to celebrate the week of Valentine's Day as well. <laughs> We've started our celebration early. But February is also important for, as I believe was acknowledged outside, uh, Black History Month. And Aside from the celebrations of Valentine's Day and, and uh, Groundhog's Day, 
I think it's a little bit more serious. I think there is something to celebrate, but I think that came with a great deal of struggle, a great deal of sacrifice. And I think part of that sacrifice and struggle pertains to what we're addressing today and right now. One minute remaining. Thank you. And I, I hope that, uh, that we get things on the right track in line with that. I'd like to also mention that coming up in, on Monday is President's Day. And when I was younger, I used to think, well, this is kind of a, you know, not so significant, not so important. But it really stems back to the celebration of Abraham Lincoln's birthday and George Washington's birthday. And I think what's particularly important, of course, we all know about Abraham Lincoln's legacy, but I'd like to bring out one of Washington's special aspects and probably the sole single most, most important thing that any leader had done up to that time, and which was to step down from office, to acknowledge the electoral process, and to not become, not to run for the third term, not to become king for life or president for life, but to acknowledge the system and to have a respect for that system. All right. And in conclusion, I'd like you to respect that same tradition. I'd like to respect the city of North Miami and I wish that you would respect yourselves in voting this down. Thank you. Richard Anise, 13030 Northeast 10th Avenue. Um, I, I keep hearing that we just spent $180,000 on a, an election that came mid-year or because of whatever. We forget the reason why we had to have that election. We have a mayor that's sitting in jail, okay? That's why we had to have that election. Please. You just saved, you, you, by, by all accounts, you're gonna cancel a contract for about 300,000, and you, and you said you may be able to handle this for 100,000. There's your 180,000 that was in the budget, <laughs> that you, and you already budgeted for an election anyway. You had to pay for that other election some other way. The money that you have now is, that's set for the election in May is already budgeted. And you just saved yourself 200000 so that you can back pay the uh, election that you had in November or whatever, and, and you're all even. But the people voted not to do this. You had other councils who decided not to do it. The judge said it very eloquently, eloquently don't show any sign of impropriety. If you want to do this going forward, after everybody's been reelected or somebody else is elected, do it for uh, ten, five years out, and and where there's no sign of any impropriety, and and just do what the people want. I think you you, you have a mandate here. You had like two people who came up with really a nonsensical thing to say they're tired of voting and you need to go to work. <laughs> Come on, do what's the right thing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jamie Olson. I live at 13135 Northeast Third Court. Um, first of all, I'm a woman. <coughs> Women have not had the right to vote for a very long time. I love to vote. I am proud of what my four mothers did to encourage us to vote. They changed the they chained themselves to <coughs> to courthouses. They chained themselves. They got in jail. They got starved to death. They died so I could vote. I'm proud of that as a woman. So <laughs> voting is very, very important. Um, the other thing is I, I'm here to clear up some rumors that I hear. Um, one rumor I hear, and I would like maybe a response, is that there's some people being paid to speak for the election. And that seems a little strange to me. That seems, I don't know, that's a you rumor. Know, you, are, you are being disrespectful to us now. I'm not being disrespectful. No, that is not. Uh, it, first of all, you say it is a rumor. It's a rumor that this I've heard. microphone is not made for rumors. I'm just expressing my uh, my belief. It is not here. made for rumors. <laughs> we who labor here, we do it because we want to serve. We don't oh. come here to be disrespectful. I I understand, and I'm not saying I'm not accusing anyone. I just heard there's a rumor, and I wanted to clear up the rumor because mm. I don't want that. I wouldn't want that in our city. I don't want our city to have any more scandals. I appreciate our scandal, our city. So thank you very much. 
Good evening. Good evening, good evening. I stand here today to get clarity because my name is Butler Phileas. I live on 1150 Northwest 122nd Street. Okay, I stand here today to get some clarity because somewhere along the line, we are saying that, you know, all voters' rights are being taken away. But I truly, from what the agenda states, it's being postponed. So let's get some clarity here. It's being postponed so it ultimately it can benefit the residents of the city of North Miami. Indeed, it was, you know what, like the judge stated, that this thing had came available so that, you know what, changes can be made 20 years ago. But at the same token, I'm asking you guys that stand right here to, you know what, make the necessary adjustments because, you know what, it has been quite some time that we have been losing money instead of, you know what, actually using benefits that would, sub that would be cost efficient. So for years and years, the county have been mishandling funds instead of, you know what, coinciding with the, the county election, we decide to do our own thing, and yet funds are being mishandled because those same funds, because according to the quarterly reports, we still need funds in this city. So if there's a way that we can, you know what, ultimately, you know what, instill something for the future, because of course we're saving 150000 on this particular run if we postpone it. But at the same token, you have to look at the future, how much we'll save in the long term versus, you know what, keeping it the same way. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, Silvia Mayol, 800 Northeast 100 at the 24th Street. And I beg you, please, uh, can you hear me? Don't be touched with rumors, because if rumor doesn't hurt you, don't pay attention. I think this is important. And about freedom, I, I like my freedom maybe to vote for Bernie Sanders as a president. Bernie Sanders is a senator of Vermont, but he doesn't have big campaign to support him because he will govern in behalf of the 90% <coughs> of this country. And I want to have the freedom, because this is a small town, to vote no, please. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. May it please the Mayor Council. Douglas Hindmarsh, my address is protected by statute. Mr. Mayor, Council, just because something is permissible does not make it legal. Just because something is legal does not make it ethical. And as I said last week, last council meeting, excuse me, perception is everything. Thank you. Next. At Wilkins Phileas, 1150 Northwest, 122 Street. Um, I feel uh, as though everyone here has a uh, one, um, one, 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 we'd like to see one end result, and that's effective government. That's it, everybody wants effective government. That's one. Now, um, how do we achieve this end? That's what we're here, I guess, to find out. Now, um, I like, I'm no gifted orator or nothing like that, but I do believe in common sense. So, I just, would you like to uh, propose, well, just have everybody just consider something. Let's, let's think of this situation. Who here would clean up their entire house and say five minutes later, repeat the process? I think that's what's happening, essentially. We, we, we all know the, the politics, the shady politics, the dark cloud that's been over to the city of North Miami. We, we the people, have, have, have dealt with this at a cost. It's cost in terms of budget and it's cost in terms of effectiveness, effective 
government. We haven't given any, the poli th these guys here haven't had any time to, to, to fix anything, to clean, to actually clean up house. So I say, let's give them the opportunity to clean the house and then let's look and see the out, let's, let's, then we, we can see the outcome for ourselves. It's a common sense thing. It's just common sense. Let's give them a chance to clean the house <coughs> before we hear. That's it. Go ahead. Yes, hi, uh, my name is Robin Cargill. I reside at 13135 Northeast Third Court. Uh, thank you, uh, council members and staff. Um, I echo the sentiment of, of most, the majority here certainly, that uh, I'm strongly opposed to moving the election. Um, a regularly scheduled and set terms of office of um, elected officials are a foundation of democracy. There's no way around the fact of a huge conflict of interest for sitting elected officials to be able to vote to extend their own term. There's, it's, it's inherently a conflict of interest. And Mayor, I appreciate the press release that you put out a few days ago giving your opposition to it. I do think that it is particularly, <laughs> in your case, uh, very important for you to not vote yes because it would extend your term uh, 400, you know, from six months to two <laughs> years, a huge difference. So I, you know, um, the no, nothing about any elected official here. I have great respect for the council, but it's an inherent conflict of interest. North Miami needs no new controversy. We've just come out of controversy. Um, 120,000 for the election is pennies in a budget that's over $50 million for the city of North Miami from the 13, 2013 uh, revenue report. And I saw a number of 100 million, but I don't know if that included special funds as well. But it's, it's a red herring to say that it's a cost issue for this election. Um, I fully agree with moving the elections in the future. I fully agree with you guys voting yourselves without a, 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 a city um, resolution. I don't think we have to vote on it. Synchronizing the election in the future when it doesn't affect your sitting terms makes great sense. If we can get 40% turnout instead of 20% or 20% instead of 10%, let's improve the, the, uh, the voter turnout. Let's improve the, the Democratic um, you know, people having the opportunity to vote and let's save money in the future. But I agree, you would lose the public trust. It's an inherent conflict of interest and I urge you to vote no to this uh, ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Dr. Smith-Joseph. Congratulations on your election. My name is Judy Feldman. I live at 13085 Ortega Lane and have done so for the last 50 years. It's been a long time. There's a lot that has changed in this city and we have had, we have had several years of distress and dysfunction in this city. It is as if, with the last election, it is as if a breath of fresh air has come through this city. I feel, even in Keystone Point, a new sense of direction, a new sense of integrity, um, and a sense that this city actually is a city of progress. If you do not vote this down, it will appear to be business as usual in the city of North Miami. Please do the right thing. Thank you. Good evening, council <coughs> and mayor. My name is Judy Brown, 1100 Northwest 128 Terrace. Um, I'm here to ask the mayor and the council to vote no for this particular um, ordinance. I would like for you all to, I was so impressed and proud of the young men and in the ceremony that took place this, this afternoon. And as a former educator, I want to remind you <coughs> on the shoulders that you all are standing. If I had to teach a lesson about the blacks, the African Americans, and other people, all people who came together on that bridge in Selma to fight for the right to vote. I would like for you to keep that image in your minds. And I do believe that our mayor will do the right thing. 
I really do. I just have that faith in him, and I'm not going to waver from that faith because he is a man of integrity, and he stood before us, and he said that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down, and I'm going to rest on that because I know he knows whose shoulders he's standing on. Thank you. Uh, public hearing is now closed. Uh, I guess I, I get to speak now. You know, when, when I face certain decisions and have to make up my mind as to which direction to go, I do listen to the people who are engaged or who are involved in whatever decision that I may have to make. And having said so, I've been doing a lot of soul uh, searching. And by the way, thank you very much for voting for me and for allowing me to sit here and be your mayor. <coughs> it is a privilege. It is an opportunity to do good by my fellow men and women. And I couldn't think of anything to go by because I usually go by previous people who came before us. Because whatever we do now, whatever decision that we take today, somebody 400 years ago went through the same thing. So because of that, I stumbled onto some old uh, readings dated back in the 17th century. 1667, to be exact, writings by writer, philosopher, John Milton. Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a writing, it's a poem, actually, they call it. It's a poem that is written in four books. He tells a story about Satan. He tells a story about Satan's rebellion against God. <laughs> and and his uh, expulsion from heaven along with these rebel angels. And he tells a story about Satan go and tempted Adam and Eve, you know, to eat the forbidden apple. At that time, we lost the paradise. So we have an apple before us. And now that's when we lost the paradise. But he continued. Th that was an epic e e e e uh, poem at, you know, at, uh, at the time, and it still lives. Then he came back <coughs> and did some more writings and call it Paradise Regained. Paradise Regained talk about the story of Jesus in the wilderness. And then he was tempted by Satan again. But at that time, Jesus took the high road and did not listen to Satan. And at that time, the paradise was regained. So as a mayor, and I sit before you, and of course everything, as you, many of you has alluded to, I am a visionary. I want to see North Miami move to new heights. Tonight, we have regained the paradise. I am not going to touch that apple. This is the correct time to clap. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, and every other. No, that's the that's the correct. No time clapping. To no clapping. <laughs> and. Mr. Mayor, can I? Yes, go ahead. And 
For the past two weeks, I've met with uh, different group of constituents in my district. And I went to at least three church. And I spoke with pastors, constituents, members of the church who reside in the city of North Miami. For the past two weeks, I have listened to my fellow Haitian radio station. Almost all of them. And I sat down with my base. And I realized both communities, the Asian community and the other people who have spoke tonight, you all want one thing. You want the election, and I think I'm going to vote for us to have an election on May 12, 2015.